Today we're going to talk about how to write a cozy mystery novel, but more specifically, I am going to give you the 10 essential elements that should be inside every cozy mystery. And the best part is I created a handy dandy workbook for you that goes through all 10 and gives you some space to write some notes of your own. I'm Lisa and welcome to my Cozy Mystery Author Jeep channel where we talk about all things related to cozy mysteries. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. Now today we're going over the 10 essential elements that I think should be inside of every cozy mystery and really what sets it apart from thrillers, police procedurals, suspense novels. It's the reason people are like, I love cozies and they seek out the cozy mystery section at the bookstore. Now, I have included a very handy dandy workbook and I say workbook because for each of the 10 elements, I left space for you to write down your ideas or jot down some notes. So let's jump into number one, which is having a very clever but unlucky heroine. And when I say clever, she should be good at something, not necessarily sleuthing. She is really good at maybe quilting or crafting or scrapbooking, or she's a great realtor, whatever her day job is. Usually she's pretty good at it and she's unlucky because she just happens to stumble upon a dead body or get wrapped up into a murder investigation. And that is the star of your book. The second thing that you need is a quirky sidekick for your heroine to go sleuthing with, to bounce ideas off of, someone for them to chat to so it's just not a big exposition of narrative in your book and also someone who usually is the opposite so if your heroine is crazy and always up for adventure then maybe the sidekick actually keeps them in check and is like let's not do that I don't want to break any rules or vice versa so sidekicks can become somebody so important that readers might even read your book just because they want to hear more about the sidekick the third thing is to have a sort of ineffective or inept or corrupt law enforcement in the area doing the helping out with the investigation because if you have a large city like let's take New York City where there is a huge vice squad and there are a million people and you have CSI and you have expert uh, detectives then you probably don't need your amateur sleuth because the police department will take care of it. The reason the amateur sleuth rises is just like in a superhero novel, there is just nobody else to take that burden on and who wants to find out the truth. And that is your amateur sleuth. And if you have an effective police department, there's no need for her. So you usually, which brings us to number four, have your book set in a small town setting. It has its own personality. It has its own fun events. It has quirky secondary characters. It has fun businesses for your heroine and everyone else to go visit. Plus then your heroine has some insider knowledge as well as do all of the other townspeople into what's going on. There's gossip, there's rumors versus in a big metropolis, and I will use New York City again, it is impossible to really know anything about anyone. I don't think I even talked to any of my neighbors and I lived in that building for a decade because nobody talks to anyone in New York. It's just kind of strangers passing in the night all the time. So this doesn't happen in a small town setting. Now I will say there is an exception. The crossword puzzle mysteries on Hallmark Mysteries is set in New York City, and it is honestly one of my favorite uh, new cozy mystery shows series that they have going on. And the star is a crossword puzzle expert and the detective just happens, well, the one that they did show, um, I know they have some more coming out, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but it was a puzzle investigation and they needed a puzzle expert. So she was able to fill that role. So it could be something like that where your character fills a specific niche role that does not exist in any sort of area, even though it is a large city. Um, number five, and this is really easy, there's not a lot of notes on this one, but it's just all cozies, I shouldn't say all, most if not all, at least all the ones that I enjoy, are first person 
POV heroin only. So I don't want to hear the point of view of, you know, a ton of different characters or alternating um, hero and heroine, right? It's not a romance, it's a mystery. I also don't want the omniscient voice that they used to do back in the 30s or whatever, or the 40s when they wrote mysteries and where you already know what's going on and it's more like a horror movie where you're worried about the uh, character getting killed because you know that the killer's on the other side of the door. So. That is usually a big no inside of cozies. You, the reason you, the reader, enjoy reading cozies is usually because you enjoy solving the crime alongside your amateur sleuth, and you're not able to do that if it is third person omniscient or even if there's altering POV because then you have more information than your amateur sleuth, and then it's kind of, to me, it's just no longer as fun. Um, number six is having a cute, adorable, and endearing pet. So even if it's not a pet cozy, which is a specific type of cozy, usually everybody has a pet. Like when I say everybody, the, I mean the amateur sleuth has some sort of pet. It's usually a cat or dog. It could be a horse or a ferret or a rabbit or a hamster, um, a lizard, but usually something soft and fluffy is nicer. You could give something that gives it some personality, like in Marigolds and Murder, uh, London Lovett gave her character a crow, which is very unique, but then it can fly around and get things for you, right? So, you know, use your imagination, anything goes. Usually your heroine does not talk to the pet unless it is a paranormal pet cozy. So your pet's just there just for them to have somebody. Now, number seven is to have PG-13. So make sure that you have no cussing, there's no graphic violence, there's no gore, there's nothing weird like a serial killer or torture or mutilation like None of that happens in a cozy. And I know what you're thinking, but it's a murder. Yeah, it's a murder. Usually it's off screen. You don't see it going in action. There's nothing gory about it, like a bunch of, you know, guts or anything laid out everywhere, some creepy thing that a serial killer crazy murderer would leave for someone to find. Uh, instead, it is just maybe someone is shot or stabbed or strangled or something where it's not like really horribly icky. Uh, so because of that, you might want to think of different ways that your character can, your victim can be murdered. And you also might want to, in this section, think about ways that your character can express being upset without using F-bombs, right? Um, number eight is having a family that is constantly part of your heroine's life. So it is not a loner type of character. This is someone who has family. They hang out with their family. They have Sunday dinners together. Their mom is calling and checking on them all the time, maybe always trying to set them up. So frequently when you talk about Cozy's having an antagonist, it's not like a normal novel where they're trying to like bring them down or con like bring be their demise, like a real competitor. It's more just sort of a thorn in their side. Like they're trying to do sleuthing. They're trying to do their everyday job but their mom really wants them to get together with a find their forever partner and give her grandchildren, um, or she really wants them to go back to college and get their degree, right? So they're kind of like nagging them and being antagonistic, but they're not being like harmful antagonistic, just kind of a funny sort of comic relief. And it also is a great opportunity for you to add subplots into your book. Um, number nine is hilarity and hijinks. So the number one thing about cozies too is they're usually humorous. Like it's always funny to me when someone says this is a humorous cozy. I'm kind of expecting them all to be humorous. So you know anything serious, death, dying, um, you know serious medical illnesses are almost always not in a cozy. They're supposed to be light and happy. Um, so you might want to think of some ways to think infuse some humor and funny situations into your book. And number 10, and most important of all, is to find an interesting job for your amateur sleuth. So they need a fun day job. So it could be usually something that you're interested in or something you want to research and you'd really love your amateur sleuth to have this or you think it's fun. I think there's one popular series where she is a blackjack dealer in Vegas. Um, there are others where, like I said, Realtors is popping up as a very popular type of cozy amateur sleuth. There is obviously the crafting ones where they do needlework or they do quilting 
where they do scrapbooking. They're the pet cozies where they are able to talk to their pets or maybe the pet always just seems to have a special nose for finding stuff. Um, there are culinary cozies. Those are very popular. There are book cozies like there is someone who owns a bookstore or they're a librarian or they're a bookbinder. Um, so, you know, really anything goes uh, except for detectives, <laughs> right? Or police force or CSI, you know, anybody who specifically is already working within the police detective field is more of a police procedural and not really a cozy. So even medical examiners, you're not going to have a medical examiner as the star of your cozy because they are already involved in the process and they do help to um, not only solve the crime, but it's also usually pretty gory if they're a medical examiner, which we already discovered in another role was not really something we wanted to put into a cozy. So that is our list. So let's go through it from the top. The first one is having a very clever but unlucky her heroine who just happens to stumble upon dead bodies and she's also an amateur sleuth, so she doesn't do detective work for her job. The second is having a super helpful but maybe quirky sidekick. And third is having a police force that is ineffective or corrupt or just not really interested in solving the case. And the fourth is a small town setting. Number five is first person POV heroine only. Number six is having an endearingly cute and adorable pet for your amateur sleuth. Number seven is make sure it's PG-13, so if your character is going to be upset, they're just definitely not going to use the F-bomb or anything related to that. Number eight is having an adorable and loving family that is constantly in their life, or maybe an antagonistic family that is always butting into their life and disrupting their every day. Number nine is hilarity and hijinks, somehow infusing some humor into your cozy. And number 10 is picking a cozy type. So whether that is a culinary cozy, a bookish cozy, a crafting cozy, or a professional cozy where they're a beautician or like the blackjack dealer, so many different and very interesting and cool options within side of cozies. All right, I hope that list was helpful. Remember to download the list, the workbook below, and I will leave a link for that in the description. And I hope everyone is having a fabulous day. I cannot wait to read your cozy. If you guys have any questions or have some ideas you want to bounce off of me or anybody else that is watching, definitely post them below. Um, I would love to help. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.